Come on, Bob. Good morning, Charles. It certainly is. What? Certainly is what? A good morning. A tremendous good morning. It was the cloud in the sky and everything that's sea washed. <laughs> anything interesting in times, dear? Don't be silly, Charles. I intend to work all day. Good. It's extraordinary about daylight, isn't it? How do you mean? The way it reduces everything to normal. Does it? Yes, it does. I'm sure I'm very glad to hear that. You're very glacial this morning. Are you surprised? Frankly, yes. I expected more of you. Well, really? Yes, really. I always took you as a woman of perception and understanding. Perhaps this is one of my off days. You better eat your breakfast while it's hot. It isn't. Now look here, Charles. In your younger days, this display of roguish flippancy might have been alluring in a middle-aged novelist. It's nauseating. Would you like me to write at your feet in a frenzy of self abasement That would be equally nauseating, but certainly more appropriate. I really don't see what I've done that's so awful. You came abominably last night. You wounded me and insulted me. I was the victim of an aberration. Nonsense. You were drunk. Drunk? You had four strong dry martinis before dinner. A great deal too much burgundy hat dinner. Heaven knows how much porting you with that Dr. Bradman when I was doing my best to entertain that mad woman. And two double brandies later, I gave them to you myself. Of course, you were drunk. Such a story, is it? You refused to come to bed. And finally, at three in the morning, when I came down to see what had happened to you, I found you in an alcoholic coma on the sofa with the fire up in your hair all over your face. I was not in the least drunk, Ruth. Something happened to me last night. Something very peculiar happened to me. You really must believe that. Nonsense. Well, it seems like nonsense now. It didn't clear a muscle that day, but I honestly had some sort of hallucination. We'd really rather not discuss this any further. But we must discuss it. It's rather quite disturbing. There, I agree with you. It showed you up in the most unpleasant light. I find that extremely disturbing. And I swear to you that during the seance, I was convinced I heard Elvira's voice. Nobody else did. I can't help that. I did. You couldn't have. And I'm equally convinced that she was in this room. I distinctly saw her, and after she'd gone to bed, we had quite a cozy little chat. And you seriously expect me to believe that you weren't drunk? I know I wasn't drunk. If I'd been all that drunk, I should have a dreadful hangover right now, shouldn't I? Not at all sure that you haven't. I haven't had a trace of a headache, and my tongue isn't even going. Look at it. I'm not the least desire to look at your tongue. Kindly put it in again. I know what it is. You're frightened. Right. Rubbish. What is there to be frightened? Elvira. You wouldn't have minded all that much if I had been drunk. It's just that it's all mixed up with Elvira. <laughs> I seem to remember last night before dinner telling you that your views of the female psychology were rather didactic. I was right. I should have added that they were puerile. And that's what it all began. And what all began? We were talking too much about Elvira. It's dangerous to have somebody so close on your mind when you're dabbing on with the occult. She certainly wasn't strong in my mind. She wasn't mine. She was, was she? You tried to give it to me that she was more physically attractive than you. So you could hold it over me. I did not. I don't give a hoot how physically attractive she was. Your whole being is devoured in jealousy. Uh, this is too much. Woman, my God, what I think of women. Your view of women is academic, to say the least of it. Just because you've been dominated by them your entire life does not mean you know a thing about them. I have never been dominated by anyone. You were aggredited by your mother until you were 23, and then you've gone to the clutches of that awful Miss, whatever her name is. Miss Winthrop Leveler. I'm not interested. And then there was Elvira. She ruled you with a rod of fire. Elvira never ruled anyone. She was much too elusive. It was one of her greatest charms. And then there was Marge Chatelise. My affair with Marge Chatelise lasted exactly seven and a half weeks, and she cried all the damn time. The tyranny of tears. And now then... look here, dear. If you'd like to make an inventory of my sex life, I think it's only fair to tell you missed out on several episodes. I'll consult my diary and get back to you after lunch. 
There's no use trying to test me with your routine amorous exploits. The only person who's ever tried to control me is you. You've been at it for years. Have not. That is completely untrue. No, it isn't. You boss me and bully me about. I can't even have a hallucination by once. Alcohol will ruin your entire life if you allow it to get a hold on you. You know. Now look here, Ruth. I would like you to know that what happened last night had nothing to do with alcohol. You adroitly rationalized the whole situation to your own satisfaction. I'm going to grant that what happened was the result of, of a hallucination, some odd psychic delusion brought on by hypnosis or suggestion. I was stone cold sober from first to last and extremely upset into the bargain. You were upset, indeed. What about me? You behaved with a startled lack of obtuse comprehension that frankly shocked me. I consider that I was rather remarkably patient. I should know better next time. Instead of lending out a gentle, commodly hand of compassion, you shouted staccato orders at me like a sergeant major. You seem to forget that you gratuitously insulted me. I did not. You called me a gutless knight. You told me to shut up. And when I quietly suggested that we should go to bed, you said with the most disgusting leer that it would be an immoral suggestion. I was talking to Elvira. If you were, I can only say that it conjures up a fragrant picture of your first marriage. Ah, my first marriage is perfectly charming. I think it's in the worst possible taste for me to sneer at it. I'm not all absorbed in your first marriage. As you might think I am, I'm much more interested in our second. It seems to me to be on the rocks. Only because you persist in taking up this ridiculous attitude. My attitude is that of any normal woman whose husband gets drunk and hurls abuse at her. I was not drunk! Be quiet, Charles. They'll hear you in the kitchen. I don't care if they hear me in the bloody Folkestone Town Hall. I was not drunk. Control yourself, Charles. How can I control myself in the face of your idiotic damn stubbornness? It's giving me claustrophobia. You better ring up Dr. Bradman. 